Welcome to Spectrum Perspectives, real talk with parents, professionals, and autism advocates with your host, Cindy Gellermini. Hi, everyone. This is Cindy with another episode of Spectrum Perspectives. And today I have a very fun guest with me. I have Hester Wagner. Hi, Hester. Welcome. Hello. To so Hester is in California and um, you're not a special needs mom, but you kind of work in the industry sort of with special needs people. So, um, so tell everybody what you do. Great. Um, I am the director of film and media services for a program called the Futures Explored Practical Film and Media Studio. Um, and what we are is a training program, a hands-on vocational training for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities to learn um, practical skills as they relate to the film and media industry. So we teach everything from acting, writing, directing, to camera lighting, sound, editing, costuming, all of the elements that go into filmmaking. Um, and then we also have a production company called Futures Films, where um, we're able to hire, be hired by clients to create video content for companies, corporations, et cetera. And then we're able to employ our students um, as they go through the program on those productions. And they get um, experience, they get paid, and then hopefully that leads towards their, their careers in the industry. Wow, that's great. So it's not just a volunteer thing. Eventually, they, they, they'll get paid to do this, right? That so, is the goal, yes. <laughs> yeah. So what are the ages? You with children, adults, both? Um, so our, our vocational program is for folks who have aged out of the school system. Um, so whether that happens with a diploma at 18 when they finish high school or if they go into a transition program um, in California, that's still funded by the school system. So then they would join us at age 22 after that. Um, and then there's no cap. So we have students who have had a, a different life path and then decided they wanted to be filmmakers and have come to us later in life. Um, but I'd say the majority of our students are in their early 20s. Um, and then the only program that we do have uh, for folks under 18 are our summer film camps. So um, we are gearing up for that this year, kind of after a, a couple off years, as we all know. Um, so we're back in action this summer. We do um, a two-week film camp for kids ages 12 to 22, um, and that's two weeks of a little bit more fun, still involving filmmaking, but more about the social, um, interacting with peers, learning how to collaborate, mm -hmm. um, learning how to share ideas, and they create a film, and then they get to have a red carpet screening in November um, where they watch the films that they create in the camp. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and a lot of our students who have come into the vocational program started in camp. Um, and we actually do um, partner with Joey Travolta of Inclusion Kil Films, Inclusion Films, um, and he does film camps all over the country. So we've had them in New Jersey in the past as well, um, in Detroit, in Pittsburgh, in Florida, all over the place. Oh, so the camp is like a traveling camp? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He partners with different people every year and he and his crew. I started out with camp, so um, I used to travel all around and you fly for two weeks to each place, bring it, bring in film camp, do camp and then move on. Um, and then each fall, he usually goes around and does a red carpet premiere at each of the places that we have camp. So, so the camp runs during the summer, but then you do the premiere in November. Yeah, yeah, because they have to edit everything. So, um, so typically right. in the in the fall, they circle back around and have a kind of a fundraising event for whatever partner organization Joey partners with, things mm -hmm. like that. So this is Joey Travolta. He's related to John Travolta, I'm assuming. Yes. So <laughs> um, our program kind of grew um, from from Joey. So he um, is John's older brother, and um, as many people probably know, the entire Travolta family was. Um, an entertainment family is an entertainment family. So Joey, his brothers and sisters were all kind of involved. Um, but Joey actually went to college and uh, I can't remember the name of the college, but it is in New Jersey um, and got a degree in special ed. Um, and oh, then, yeah. I thought you were going to say in film. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah. So he, <laughs> he was a special ed teacher for a couple of years and then then he got the bug again and went back into recording and, and was a, a musician and then became a director and producer. Um, but he had that background. And so um, he had a daughter. And when she was in high school, um, she was kind of involved in film at her high school, putting together a film festival. And through that, a young gentleman um, with autism kind of got connected to Joey and he wanted to make a film, um, but he didn't know how. And so, you know, he worked with them and he made a documentary called Normal People Scare Me. Um, and Joey helped him to create and produce that film. 
10 years later, they made Normal People Scare Me Too um, and kind of did a follow up on where he was 10 years later. Um, but that kind of brought Joey back to this idea of um, teaching film skills in a practical way, not in an academic way, but um, you know, really giving people that hands-on experience. And he started doing workshops, um, started doing the camps, you know, and all of that kind of grew in the early 2000s, around 2005 and six. Um, and then in 2007, um, he started the vocational program in Burbank. Um, and then that grew in 2008 to Bakersfield. And that's when I first started um, to be involved was the camps in 2008. And then we started the adult program in Bakersfield. Um, and then in 2013, expanded to the Bay Area. And, you know, here we are. We now actually have seven different studios that are doing this training program. Um, one is run by Joey and his organization, Inclusion Films. And then I have three through Futures. And then there's three that are run through a program called Options for All um, in Southern California. So um, all of us are working to, you know, provide provide skills. We all have our, our unique kind of personality and how we approach the program. But um, in, in my programs, we have about 100 students right now um, through our three studios uh, who are all learning skills and, you know, working towards getting those jobs. So wow. I want to go. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Man, I wish there was something like that around when I was a kid. I totally would have gone to that camp. I would have loved it. Um, so, so walk me through camp. Tell me, tell me like more specifically about the kind of things that they do. So do they write their own script and? Yeah. So the way that the, the camp goes, um, it's two weeks, it's a day camp. So it's usually 10 to three or, or something similar to that, um, for those two weeks and campers are, are typically split into about three groups. So there'll be about 50 campers per camp. Um, three groups, usually by age for the most part. Um, and then there's support in each classroom. There's a classroom teacher, um, usually like behavioral support of some kind, parent volunteers, et cetera. Um, so the, the, each class will have about maybe 17 or 18 campers in the class. Um, and then they go through the process of making the film. So um, Joey typically starts every day with dance. Um, <laughs> so kind of get everybody up and going, you know, he's a dancer, so he loves to do that. Um, not every camper is into dancing, as we know, and that's fine. So um, it really is a place where people can be themselves, where they can just, you know, relax and, and everything's okay. Um, so once, once dancing's over, you go into your classroom. The first couple days are usually um, involve writing, uh, which again, that's not what everybody's interested in. So it's a way to like the classes are structured in a way to get everybody involved. So there'll be a game or an activity and then maybe some, um, you know, writing groups will go off and work with somebody on writing and the others will work on drawing or design. Um, so it really is trying to figure out like what each camper is into yeah. and, and how to, how to work towards that. So, you know, when I, when I was a camp teacher, um, you know, I remember one camper, he, he didn't even really want to be in the room. Like he was, he was struggling at first to, you know, to kind of do what the group was wanting to do, but he was super creative and, and really liked to draw. And so we just worked with him on like, okay, what is going to keep you engaged throughout the day? And he ended up, I think, coming back to camp three or four years wow. because we found that he really liked making the props. And so from day one, like he was the prop guy. And once he had that as like, he owned that you could see the confidence build year over year. And even though at first he was kind of a sourpuss about camp, mm -hmm. like we found his niche and then he became, and he designed like robo arms. And I mean, all these really cool things because the camp films are a little zany, I would say, usually. <laughs> I mean, you get, you get a bunch of like teenagers in a room and you give them free reign to make a five minute film and we've had all sorts of things. I, I will say there is usually, um, there's always a theme around camp. Uh, so Joey will come in um, with a theme like kindness, or they'll do a spoof on the Twilight Zone called the Bizarre Zone, or, you know, a variety of things that kind of at least get camp in, you know, kind of some jumping off point. Right, so at least you know where with. to start. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, so they, they write it. Um, and then those who are interested in acting, there's, you know, opportunities for anybody who wants to act. We make sure that happens. Um, if people are interested in, you know, the camera, uh, et cetera, um, camp doesn't get as much into editing just because of the time. Um, so camp usually ends like the last couple of days, they'll do an, an intro to editing and look at some of the stuff they've shot. Um, but they don't, they don't fully get into that 
that process. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes filming going on. So the, the premiere that they have in the fall is like the whole thing. It shows all of what the campers were doing, the behind the scenes, the making of, of all their films. Joey interviews everybody, and those are usually a lot of fun. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's a lot that goes into that. And um, and like I said, everybody gets an opportunity to, to figure out what they want to do in camp, what, how, what right. their piece of it is. Right. And yeah. what are the, um, they're, they're, it's a special needs camp, so it's not specifically autism. I'm assuming it's all different. It's not. It, yeah. And when they first started, um, when I first started in 2008, a lot of the camps were advertised as camps for kids with autism. And then that kind of grew to be a full inclusion camp. So really now they're open to anyone. We really want it oh. to be, um, you know, a place where, where people can, can feel um, included with their peers. Um, so it's it, the camp that I run in California because of our funding system, it, it is still mostly, um, you know, kids and young adults with developmental disabilities that come from our regional center system. Um, but sometimes they'll come with a friend who doesn't identify as having a disability or a sibling. Um, but yes, it has kind of expanded from being focused on autism to, to really being a lot more open. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I know uh, John Travolta's son, he was autistic, wasn't he? Uh, Chet? Is that, am I saying the right Jet. Word? Jet. Jet was the Jet. same. Jet. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I, they're a very private family, so I, I don't have a whole lot of, you know, well, interaction on that side of things, but yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. But I just, I just was, I just didn't expect you to say that Joey taught special ed. I thought yeah. maybe he just did it because he had a nephew or something. I thought it was just because it had to do with the family. I, I, you know, I didn't know he was a special yeah. ed teacher. So that's very interesting. Yeah. So, I think, I mean, I think to me that speaks to the fact that like, disability is connected to all of us in some way, right? So it's like, you know, I I work a lot in like trying to change um, industry, um, like representation for people with disabilities in the film and media industry, right? And that's, it's starting to shift. Um, but I, you know, I talk a lot about that and the buying power um, of people of the disability community is huge because it's not just people with disabilities, it's family members and, you know, everybody knows somebody or has a family member or has, has been impacted. So I think that's kind of an example of that is that like, yeah. I think the assumption could be that it came from that, but really, you know, it was all, it was always there for, for him and his family. Um, and he, he'll tell you like growing up, um, he says that his household, um, his dad was somebody who was just like, the, you know, the, the heart of the earth and everybody was welcome at the Travolta household. And I think, you know, it just kind of instilled that empathy in him mm -hmm. and, and his family from a young age. Like he mm -hmm. says that they were, he was the house where anybody could come and drop in for dinner. And his dad was just like treated everybody equally. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I think that, that really influenced, he, he talks about it in a way that's very clear that that influenced, um, why he does what he does today. And, right. you know, I just had lunch with him the other day and he's, I don't think he would mind me sharing that he's, you know, 71 years old um, and he has no intention of, of stopping or slowing down. And, right. and, you know, it's it's really great. It's his passion. And he's a grandpa now, so he's he's got that focus. But um, mm -hmm. but he's still, you know, he spends a lot of his time trying to make connections to find work. Um, they've done a campaign called Let's Work out here in California that's really focused on what different people with disabilities are doing in employment um, in a variety of different sectors. And um, so really trying to, to do that advocacy piece and, and you know, the, get the, all the stories out there. Um, and because he's a filmmaker doing it, you know, in those ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it's so cool that this even exists out in Hollywood, you know. Um, so tell me about the the regular. Pro I want to call it a day program. It's not. It's not a day program. But tell me about that. So we talked about camp. Tell me about the the other aspect. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny you say that. I mean, it. I think on paper is listed as a day program for some of our programs in California, and so we're we're constantly trying to like, you know, kind of fight that fight of the fact yeah. that like we're not a day program. Um, so the the way the program kind of works um, is that when when somebody comes to us and says they have an in interest in film, they go through an application process, um, and once they join us, you know they kind of try everything out, or they let us know what their interests are if they already know. Um, and then in the program, which does run, the reason that's kind of funny is right now it does run around ten to three Monday through Friday for everybody every day, um, but we are working on 
changing that, kind of evolving our program into the next phase, which could be a little less um, anchored to the day program kind of timeline, because um, some folks have jobs, maybe they want night classes. So that's the direction we're moving in. But for now, um, they come in and we have, you know, like I said, classes and variety of things every day. Um, and so our studios will sometimes be in like class mode where they'll have, you know, a block of classes on, on all the things that are being taught. Um, and then they'll go into production. So maybe the writing classes come up with a script and then a crew gets together and we produce that or everybody comes together to make what we call like a bigger thesis film. Um, and for those, we will go on location. We will hire actors from the community. Um, our students, of course, can audition too, but it's, you know, it's it's really um, the opportunity when we're when we're filming our studio projects to integrate with the community and to have have those opportunities where we're we're going and we're filming at a you know a library or a, the caves of a winery we've filmed in or you know lots of different fun locations and um, that gives our students a little bit more of this like real life set experience right so they have their classes they have their kind of class projects but when we go into a thesis film it's like your call time is this you've got to be there we shoot slightly longer days still not hitting the 12 hour um you know wild and crazy world of actual filmmaking um but we do shoot longer days and night shoots and things like that um and then you know we edit them and then every every year or so we'll have a, a premiere event um in locally where you know families and friends can come um we've done a couple of those online now but we'll go back to doing those in person this year and um, then the students, you know, they get to see their work. They've got stuff on their resume. Um, in the program as well, we do we do have job developers. So we also kind of work on like making sure that they're job ready with those skills that they need. So if that's getting their resume up to date, having a, a reel if they're an editor, um, you know, the, the things that they need to market themselves and really try to work towards like, what are your goals? What are your next steps? So we have... Um, quarterly meetings, you know, in terms of goal progress, you know, similar to IEP and, and all of that, we have that, that whole process where there are official um, meetings, but then, you know, also just checks on like, what are you working towards? You know, um, what, what are your, what are your job goals? What are your life goals? How can we help you get there? Um, where we kind of are right now is really trying to figure out with students that have been with us for a long time, like, how do we support that next phase? Um, and I think that that's true for a lot of filmmakers. Um, because it's a creative industry. Sometimes you're waiting tables while you're auditioning, you know, that whole thing. So finding that um, in supporting our students and then also with others around them trying to navigate this, like, what do, what do you mean you're not just going to get a nine to five job and then go there? And it's like, well, you've chosen this path that's different. I think sometimes in the disability community, people think you get a job at the grocery store, you get a job as a janitor, like these are the options for you. And so we're trying to work to like help everybody, the community, the support teams and everybody kind of understand that like this choice of following this, you know, film career is, is, is different. It doesn't fit in that mold. Um, and that's, I think that's my biggest challenge right now um, for our program, for the community is like navigating the fact that like film doesn't fit in this mold of having a nine to five job. And so our, our program can't, the supports we provide can't. And so how do we meet everybody in that space? Um, has anybody gotten any jobs from your program? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of like, oh, this is the cool, fun success story. And those are a lot of fun. Um, but I just literally right before uh, you and I were talking, did our board report. Um, and so far in the first quarter of 2022, um, we've had 17 paid projects that 20, I think it was 27 students have worked on. Um, so just in three months, like we've gotten a lot of gigs that a lot of our students have, have gotten um, employed to do. Um, and most of those are a promotional video for a theater company or, you know, someone got a grant to create a video and they hire us to do it. Um, so smaller gig stuff. Um, in 2019, um, we had a student get hired by Apple TV to be a co-star on their show, Little Voice. Um, and in that show, there were, I think, four characters with autism who um, their characters lived in uh, an apartment all together um, on the show. And uh, my student got cast as the brother of the main character who, who lived in that, um, in that apartment. Um, 
And so there were a lot of fun storylines. If you haven't checked out the show, it, it only got one season, but it was, it was a fun show. And, um, you know, it hey, explores what was it called? Him. it's called little voice. Um, it was oh, okay. produced by, um, Sarah Bareilles, um, oh, okay. and, um, Jesse Nelson, who did, I am Sam, um, was the writer director for that. So, okay. um, and where, was, where could that be seen? It's on Apple TV. Oh, on Apple. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still there. And, um, yeah, it's a great show. Uh, he, you know, he gets to, there's an episode where he, you know, gets a job. I mean, there's, it's drama, of course, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of fun storylines that are very relatable, I think, if you, if you work with this, this population. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a really very random and very awesome opportunity that somebody who worked in the casting director's office for the show had met Joey 12 years earlier and remembered that he did this kind of program and Google searched it and somehow found my name through the Google search, called my administrative assistant, answered, I wasn't in, she couldn't remember the number. I like tried to look it up to call back. I mean, it was such a like, just those little things where it all lines up perfectly. Um, I wasn't gonna audition the student that ended up getting it because I wasn't in at that studio. Then I walked to that studio, or went to that studio the next day and I was like, oh, Kevin, like you should audition. So it was like totally last minute. They called the next day. The day after that, we were both on a plane to New York for like an overnight, like just boom, boom, boom. And then I think within two weeks from the initial phone call I got, he had been booked and was living in New York. We got him set up with an Airbnb. We got him set up with local support. A couple friends of mine even were like, you know, kind of helped him with some one-on-one -on -one, like life skills stuff. And, yeah. you know, we just make it work. Like when the opportunities happen, we make them work. Um, and that was a great opportunity for him. It was, you know, um, he, he did a great job. He's now auditioning all the time. Um, and he lived by himself in New York for like three and a half months. Um, oh. And then through that, through the connections with Sarah and, um, you know, the folks that were there, um, we had lines open for other opportunities. So I had another student this year um, work in the COVID compliance department on the second season of Girls 5 Eva, which is a Peacock TV show that stars Sarah Bareilles. Um, so I just reached out to her. I was like, any opportunities? And then that connected us to another producer. So it's like, you know, all of those little things are getting more and more opportunities. And, you know, those are the big, exciting stories, of course. Um, but I also am very proud that like locally, like we're getting work, we're getting, um, you know, through word of mouth and, and stuff, you know, people are like, oh, that production company is cool. Like that, we, you know, they support our mission and then they give us more work. Um, and then, you know, we've had, a couple students go down to LA and work on, um, you know, Disney's doing a lot of inclusion, diversity type stuff. So they have this, um, I'm blanking on the name, but um, this series where they bring in diverse stories of shorts. Um, and I have a student that worked on the first one of that. She's going back to work on the second one. Hopefully they're going to bring more of our students. So, you know, each thing kind of builds on the next. Um, and so it's very exciting to, to, I think because I've been doing this for, about a decade and a half, I've really started to see productions, even on a large scale, um, shift their attitude. Um, I think early on, I remember one conversation where we had a student who had worked as a grip on a feature film and did a great job. Um, somebody from that production approached, and they never said who, but it was like a, a named person, and said, hey, can we bring this person? They have a disability. And like, because they connected those two sentences together, the producer was like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Um, and that's hard. It's hard to go through that, right? And to talk to our students about, like, do you disclose your disability? Because that, like, door will close. Um, but that was only a few years ago, and now I feel like those conversations the, the negative side of that is happening less and the like, oh yeah, we could explore that. And like, you know, let's, yeah, let's set up an interview and see what we could do. That's happening more. Um, change is too slow always, but it's, it's still nice to see that start to shift. Yeah. I interviewed a doctor uh, a couple of weeks ago and he talked about how he tried to schedule his autistic son to go and see another doctor and the doctor refused to see him because he, he had autism, you know, and he was, he's like, okay, I guess as a doctor, I get it, but 
it, that was my son. <laughs> you know? And so it's in all, you know, it's on all fields, I think. Yeah. I just don't want to deal with behaviors or, or whatever, whatever they have in their head. But yeah, yeah, it's that is true. It does happen everywhere. And hopefully, and just little by little chip away at those um, preconceived notions. And, you know, um, I think one thing that I work with when I bring in like new staff sometimes that haven't necessarily, you know, they've maybe got a film background, but they don't have a background working with people with disabilities. Um, and they have kind of an idea on how a classroom should be run that very quickly <laughs> gets changed, um, you know, and so it's, it's a lot of, you know, training and support around like, is it a big deal if three of your students are pacing around in the back of the classroom? Like, why does that matter? You know, they're, they're processing the information. When you ask them to do what you want them to do, they know how to do it, you know? So like, just little things like that, that I think are still, you know, needing awareness um, so that people can just kind of accept that, that things don't have to look a certain way in order to, to be effective or to be reaching somebody in a way that you're trying to reach. How much staff do you have? What, what's the ratio to student? Um, I think on paper, our ratio is between a, a one to three and a one to seven. Um, so it depends on the class. You know, our editing classes are usually three or four folks in a class um, working on stuff because computers and, you know, things like that. But the acting classes might be a little bit larger because it's actually nicer to have a bigger class. Right. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, in terms of like staff that we have in the building, to work with our students, we probably fall in like one to six um, on any given day. That That's another, I, I'm going through right now and, and working with my staff on kind of like, what are some main themes that are going on with them? And one thing that's come up is um, wanting a little bit more training around how to teach to different learners. Um, so I'm looking for, you know, speakers to bring in or, or trainers to bring in on, on some of that like classroom stuff. Um, because a lot of them, you know, they're filmmakers first, um, and then they they bring their skills in to work with our students. So navigating that sometimes can be, you know, a little a little tricky, and or you know, take some time for them to kind of build up that that idea of you know, oh, there's another way I can do this. Um, and so, you know, I my background is in that, right? I was trained in how to be an educator first, so. You know, we kind of all meet in the middle and, and try to figure it out together. But one of the things I'm I'm looking at building into the program in the next few years are um, more uh, outside resources and trainings. So if you, if you know anybody, that would be a really great trainer on like, you know, how to teach to different learning styles. Um, mm -hmm. That's something I think we can we can you know continue to improve on with our staff. But th we have we have great instructors and one of the cool things is a lot of them are still working, you know, on the weekends and stuff on other projects. Um, and they have opened up those projects to bringing in our students. So, you know, sometimes it'll just be to volunteer and come, you know, shadow for a day, but it's it's getting that experience outside of our studio, which sometimes can be, you know, you get complacent, you get comfortable. You're like, you know, I can do this in the studio and nobody cares. And it's like, well, on another set that might, you know, get noticed or, you know, not be as okay. So getting that experience outside of our studio is really helpful. Um, and so it's really great that our, our staff have been open to that. They've shot, um, just last Monday, I went um, on set for a day. One of my coordinators is shooting a feature film um, with Greg Sestero, who did The Room and The Disaster Artist, um, and was able to get eight of our students to, to work on their on their set for the day. So, you know, they had they had a local shoot. He was coming in to do that. Like, just those things are really awesome, you know, mm -hmm. opportunities. And then the students are like, oh, okay, this is what 12 hours feels like. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, <laughs> so um, I think, I think sometimes that's the main thing that I that I notice with our students when they get jobs. It's like, I'm really tired. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so what are the different types of things that they learn? So you have acting classes, right? You mentioned um, sound. I guess they do lighting, editing. Um, I'm not in the industry, so you tell me. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's a living, breathing animal sometimes, you know, the, the core things would be, yes, um, acting, voiceover, um, camera, lighting, grip, like, so setting up all the, the C stands and um, flags and, you know, all the, all the, any, 
any of the equipment that's set up on a set that isn't lighting um, would be your grip equipment. So that's that's a really good skill to have. Um, doing the slate, you know, learning how to mm -hmm. to pull focus, like all of those are, are in the camera department, but those are good entry level jobs. We do classes on how to be a PA because we tell everybody like you're going to start as a PA. Um, so Which is what? What's production that? assistant. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's the, the, the gopher, the, um, you will stand here for 12 hours on the street corner and tell people mm -hmm. when they can and can't walk by. Um, but it's a job. And, you know, um, my, my student that went to New York and worked in the COVID department, he was a COVID PA and he was said, you know, sometimes it was boring. Sometimes they were just sitting there handing out masks to people, you know, and it's like, but if you're the person that they're like, they did that well every day, you do build, you know, you, you move up quickly. So all of those skills are equally important. Um, but then we do, you know, we have a lot of writers, a lot of really talented writers. So classes in writing, um, art design, storyboarding, um, digital arts. So like graphic design, creating the posters for film, creating um, any, you know, graphics that would be included. Um, we don't do a whole lot in the animation realm because it really is its own industry. Um, and we would need, you know, a little bit more of a setup. But, you know, occasionally the, the basic intro stuff that involves um animation and then um recently a couple of our students have been getting into stop motion um, and doing some claymation and stop motion which is a lot of fun um and then you know um, how to do all the paperwork that goes into it call sheets and schedules and budgeting um we have classes in that um you know if if there's we have sound some music if there's a student that comes to us and says like i'd really like to learn about this we we try to figure out if we can support it um that happened a lot over covid we were totally online for you know a year and a half and uh had a student come to me and was like i want to learn how to design and code for video games and that's not really what we do but i had a friend who did that and so we brought him on as a volunteer to just teach that class so we'll we'll try to find it if we can if it's related um, and then again, you know, job skills. So interviewing, you know, how to, how to go out and find a job, how to follow up on your application, things like that. So there's, there's a lot of different things that go on. Film theory, not, it's not as much on the academic side, but we do go into like, you know, analyzing films and trying to decide. I think teaching aesthetics sometimes is, is the hardest thing, right? Like, why is this shot better than this shot? Um, so we, we do try to, to approach that as well with our I have, you know, some very talented filmmakers in, in our staff. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I totally want to go to school there. <laughs> we do. We do have some fun. So it's, I mean, it's work though. It's, you yeah. know. But even just the part where you're teaching them how to, how to go on an interview and, and do all these, you know, I, I can think of adults, you know, that are neurotypical that need classes like that you know oh, yeah just yeah. basic life skill stuff that nobody teaches people and then they they're you know have an anxiety because they have to go on a job interview and if they would just have a simple you know somebody walk them through it you know take all that anxiety away it'd be great uh, yeah so how is this all funded yeah so in california we are very um lucky here to have the california regional center system so um in the 70s i'm not going to even try to get all the years right but um the lanterman act was passed um and that actually gave entitlements to people with disabilities um and so those entitlements involved you know a right to live work and enjoy life um as much as you know they can or want to and um so the regional center system was set up out of that and they provide funding from birth to death um for so much. Uh, and so obviously, you know, before you're out of the school system, they're your occupational therapy, they provide, you know, all, all the different services that somebody might need and supports respite for families, um, you know, all of those kinds of things, durable medical equipment. Uh, and then when you're in the adult world, a lot of, you know, ILS, independent living support, um, as much or as little as a person wants or needs, um, help in finding housing, etc. And then they also, you know, are, um, fund vocational programs, day programs. So we are vendored with the regional center. Um, so if a regional center case manager has somebody on their caseload that says like, oh, I like movies, and you know, they can be like, oh, we have this program, and then they refer them to us, and um, we have a uh, tour and an interview and a visit day process. Um, and then if they're 
you know, accepted into the program out of that, then the regional center will fund the program for as long as it's fitting in with the person's goals. Um, so, you know, we, we meet, like I said, four times a year, make sure your, you know, your goals are, are moving forward and assess them, change them, whatever needs to happen. Um, and as long as that's all going well, the regional center will um, continue to fund our program. So um, the other really cool program that we have within the regional center system uh, on the work side of it is called a paid internship program. Um, and so if we find a company um, that wants to, you know, maybe hire a couple of our folks for an internship, um, the company can do that without having to pay the interns, but the interns still get paid. Um, and the regional center will fund that up to uh, 10,400 hours a year, it's a, you know, kind of random cap, but um, it at least provides, you know, that that opportunity to like get experience and work that would hopefully lead to um, competitive employment. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, I think that's why we have seven studios in California, because the the system is really well set up for the program to be able to work. Um, we don't have to extensively fundraise every year to be able to run our program. Um, I would oh, love- Great. <laughs> yes. I would love to have a program in New York and New Jersey. Um, absolutely. I've talked to a lot of people out where you guys are um, who have said like, oh, how can we get it here? And it's just, you know, we're in this- yeah, Getting space them of, like... to fund it is not yeah. the same as in <laughs> yeah. California is what I'm learning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so until we find that bucket of gold. Apparently, New York is um, has a lot better uh, resources than New Jersey, so you have better luck there, I think, okay. than in yeah. New Jersey. So. Well, I'd still love to do it. I, you know, in, we, we did um, have the program in Detroit for a while, and there was some connection with like, like vocational rehab or Department of Rehab, um, but it's, it's not as, as easy as it is with the regional centers. Um, and you can private pay for our program. Um, it's about, I think, $1,000 a month to, to come as a student if you just want to private pay. Um, so that's, that's of course, out there. It's, it's um, available. Um, but that would be somebody maybe ne that ne doesn't necessarily have special needs that just wants to come. They would have to Yeah, or they there. maybe have a disability that doesn't qualify for the regional center, right. um, which, you know, again, there's, there's a whole lot that goes into, like, I, I've, I've met some people who, you know, have autism didn't get diagnosed as a kid and have tried to go through, you know, getting in the system and haven't, haven't been able to, or, you know, have been told they don't qualify. And, you know, again, I don't know all the ins and outs of why they do and don't make certain decisions. Um, mm -hmm. But I know, you know, for folks that have said like, oh, I've tried to get regional center services and I can't, and apparently I don't need them and I'd still like to take your program and, mm -hmm. um, you know, or they have a different disability that that's, doesn't fit within the parameters of the regional center system. Um, we've had some people who've had funding from Department of Rehab, but not regional, and they've wanted to come to our program and, you know, trying to work that out, it's a little bit tricky. So, you know, we, again, we, we'll, we will always try to be creative, um, but yes, also anybody could walk off the street and say, you know, here's my money, I wanna take your program and right you're not gonna turn that away it. right <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so. so i have a um i have a friend that she owns a, a video production company and you know you, you typically you just think of tv but she they do a lot of work for like corporate right they do a lot of corporate videos and um whatever whatever kind of video projects some some one might have they, they will handle that as well as doing you know cable tv and, and that kind of stuff so so um so if there's people out there that want a video project done that's something that they could actually contact you and you guys can can do the project mm -hmm. for them right yeah exactly and we can do everything from the full project from beginning to end um, we've also done a lot of um, projects where people have said, I have this footage. Um, a lot of this happened with COVID where they were like, we have all of this Zoom training. Can you edit it for us? Or, okay. you know, so we can take anything like that. But I, I do think, you know, I've, I've had families come and they're like, well, you're in Stockton, California. How are you ever going to get a job in film? You know, and it's like, no, that film is happening everywhere. You know, there's there's video that almost every company needs video now to market, to advertise. Um, so, you know, those those skills can be utilized. You don't have to move to New York or LA to, to be doing this kind of work. Um, but again, through our production company, we could also have somebody be like, oh, we have this shoot next week and I just need two more PAs and they could contract with us for crew members as well. So like, you know, any of those things are, are on the table. 
Um, I'd say the majority of work we get is for other nonprofits that need videos for their website and they want us to be there from development through to post and that's fine too. Um, we've done a couple weddings. It's not really our jam, but we yeah. could if we were asked. Um, we've done a couple commercials for, you know, local access type things. Um, we've done photography for people's websites. So, you know, it's, it's a, we, we can do a lot because we have such a talented pool of people that we work with. Um, but yeah, and we've traveled um, you know, with, with the connections with Joey, like they were just in Colorado shooting the other day. So, you know, if, if it can be in the budget, we will come to you as well. So. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, well, let's say I want you to come to New Jersey to film something for me. Do I have to pay for your plane fare and for your hotel and all that kind of stuff? And, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, the simple answer is yes, probably. Um, but then the creativity comes with like, well, what can we do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and is there a way that we can make this opportunity happen with some of the creative funding that we have, you know, with using the paid internship program, which has covered travel for people before. Mm -hmm. um, if that's part of the internship, we've sent people to Savannah to film. We've sent people to Colorado to film. Mm -hmm. um, we've sent people to Arkansas. Um, so you know, I, I'm very creative with figuring out a way to make things work. I also have family in New York and New Jersey. So I'm personally always up for like figuring out a way to make it work. And then I'm like, <laughs> you don't have to pay for me because I'll make it a vacation after or before. Um, right. You know, right. so right. I, I'd, I'd say, you know, reach out, let's have a talk. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I mean, work, work for our students is our number one goal and priority. So Sure. Any any way we can make that happen, as well as changing the landscape and changing perspectives and, you know, helping the, the community of the world, you know, recognize the skills and talents that our folks bring to the table. Right. You know, right. That's, right. That's what we're here to do. Yeah. I've been. Um, I try to tell people to do that sometimes, too. I know in Robbie's school, they have vocational training and things, and I'll try to say, hey, you know, you could drop that work off at at his school and the kids would be happy to do that work for you something that you find very monotonous you know like whatever stuffing envelopes and all that kind of stuff they they love doing those monotonous things like I hate editing <laughs> it's just so time consuming and so monotonous and I'm like hey I'll send you my footage and you guys edit it you know and I know that you can drop uh, files in Dropbox and you you guys can do all that stuff you know yeah and, absolutely you know you can do stuff on zoom whatever yeah, I think that, you know, I mean, one, just the technology that exists, and then two, just mm -hmm. all the stuff we learned in the last two years with how much more we can do remotely um, mm -hmm. has really opened up work. You know, we have some folks that aren't ready to leave their houses yet. They're still like, nope, I'm good at home, but they can get work there. You know, we have some students that know how to edit and it's like, okay, well, we can get you the hard drive or we can get you the footage. Mm -hmm. You can work on it at home. We can jump on a Zoom to support and go through it. Um, you know, so I think people are realizing that that work opportunities, um, you know, sometimes for people with disabilities, um, the the remote element is 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 a door that can be opened, and mm -hmm. you know. So that's great. So you guys, you're you're trying to uh, work on that whole inclusion in the workplace stuff, was which is which is terrific. Um, so I'm assuming though, I, I know for my son, I don't think as much as I would love this, I don't think it would be appropriate for him only just because of his cognitive, you know, functioning level. He, he wouldn't understand. He would be too much hand over hand and he wouldn't understand, you know, what was going on. And so do you have some type of, um, I think you said you, they, you, you interview them or something ahead of time. Yeah. To so figure out if it's a right fit for them or not. Exactly. And, and, to me, there's not, there's not a, there's, there's not just like a set, this type of person and not this type of person. It really is like an individual. Um, that's why we, we go through the interview process because um, you really can't judge whether a person would be good for this, this program based on, you know, the IPP document that we get and the assessments that we get on paper, you know, you really have to meet the person. And, you know, we've had folks where they're, their expressive and receptive language skills um, were, were not conversational and they've been very successful in this program because like the hands-on, you know, you show them how to do something once and they've got it um, has been, you know, 
awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And and they'll do it the same way every time perfectly, you know? And so, yes, at the surface in the first moment, it might be like, are you understanding me? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, I don't understand our language yet. And then you kind of have to learn how to, to engage in, in how they communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you kind of figure that out, it's like, okay, but you're setting up a C-stand exactly where I tell you to every time and there's no issues there. Um, you know, and yeah, and at other times, um, you know, we've had people who were highly verbal and conversational and they didn't fit well in this program. So it's, I mean, it, it really, to me is, it's a, about meeting the person, learning what their skills are, how they communicate, trying to find that access into what's going to work for them and where they're going to thrive. Um, but it, it isn't a program for everybody. It is a very, you know, kind of rigorous program. So some of our criteria do involve, like, you need to be able to stay for the day and have the stamina to be engaged for the day, um, you know, and um, and we don't work with people who have, you know, violent um, kind Maybe. of behavioral type stuff, um, just because we, we don't have that support. We have behavioral support at our camp, but we don't have behavioral support in our program. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's, again... Everybody has behaviors every day, but right. when when it's something that um, you're also that dealing with very work. expensive equipment. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. I know. So, that, you yeah. know, my my son had had um, thrown quite a few expensive items and broken them in our house, and that would be I think that would be my other fear of of him going in there and breaking all your stuff. So I'd be like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's the way that our program is right now. It's not for everybody. I think um, one of the things, like I was saying, we're trying to look at evolving um, is more around like, we have a number of students who are really interested in film. They enjoy being here. They enjoy what we're doing. They love the skills that we're learning. Mm -hmm. They're not really focused on work. Um, and then we have some students who are like, I want a job. I want it now. I want to be the next Steven Spielberg, like get me out there, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so trying to support all of those folks in the same studio environment can be hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're looking at is, is do we create, um, you know, through goals and assessments of the individuals, like some different tracks that they can be on, right? So if people really do just want to have a hobby, like that's great, that's fine. And we want to be a program where you can have that. Um, and maybe you change your mind and you want to work later or you just don't know yet or, you know, you really do just want to make films with your friends and that's what your focus is. Um, and right now we're, we're the only program in our area that does either. And so we have both and, you know, and it, it can get convoluted, especially for some of our staff sometime who are like, what are we doing right now? Because this person doesn't want a job and this person does. And how do I work with both of them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so trying to figure out like how, how we can customize our program to, to fit, you know, those who are like, let's make a cool movie and let's have some fun. And those who are like, I want my resume and I want this, and, you know, so mm -hmm. we're figuring that out. That's in our, our strategic plan for the next few years. Yeah. But that's a good problem to have. <laughs> it is. I mean, and it's, yes, I think that's, that's probably a good response for, for some of my staff to hear. Cause I think they get caught up in the struggle of that, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm like, but everybody's here and they're being creative and, mm -hmm. um, you know, so trying to find the, the joy and, and the fun in what we do every day is, is important to remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So if someone is interested in your program, um, how do they, how do they get in? They contact you, they contact. Who do yeah. They contact? Yeah. Um, you can check out our website, which is mm -hmm. www.futures-explored.org. Um, and you can email me directly, which is um, Hester Wagner at futures-explore.org or Hester at futuresfilms.org. That's our, um, our business is Futures Films. And that's our website for that as well, futuresfilms.org. Futures um, or features? You're saying features or futures? I know. It's hard. Futures. Like future. the, fu the future. Right. Like back, I know. Yeah. Back to the future. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, <Let's speak> film. <laughs> <laughs> I have had that mistake a couple of times. So yeah. So you can contact me at um, futures explored or futures films um, and reach out to me directly and that can be anything that can be you know about our program about our camp um, we have had people come to camp from all over the country too um, and they've come we had someone from Ireland come for like three years in a row wow. um, so so camp is definitely open applications for that are open right now the camp dates and camp for is for summer. what age what age group is that it's just for kids 
Yeah, 12 to 22. Yeah, you told me that. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this summer it is June 27th through July 8th is our summer camp dates. Um, and that's usually, they'll be around those weeks every year. So if this year it's too late to figure that out, check us out for next year. Um, but it's all on the same website, futuresiphonexplore.org. Um, you can reach out about work, like you said, editing, creating family videos, whatever you need. Um, or if you know somebody who wants to be a special guest, wants to talk to our students about, you know, being in the industry, about their experience. We've had a lot of Zoom guests, over I'd say 150, you know, actors, writers, directors, mm. showrunners, PAs, like people from all over the industry mm. um, have come and, and talked to us about their experience. So, you know, that's an option as well. So mm. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, just reach out. That's awesome. Hester, thanks so much for today. What a fun uh, thing that you do and uh, and a fun interview. And uh, next time I come out to California, I'm going to come visit. <laughs> Absolutely. We would love to see you and vice versa. If I'm out in Jersey, I will I will reach out and say hi. Yeah. Awesome. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Cindy, so much. And you have a great rest of your Sunday. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed listening and it helped you gain a new perspective. If you're interested in buying our book series, Robbie's World and His Spectrum of Adventures, the link will be in our episode description as well as my Instagram and Facebook pages. If you enjoyed the show and you'd like more content, please be sure to hit that like button, follow us, and don't forget to leave us a great review. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives.